Crystal from the Abundantly Blessed Homestead. Sorry I'm late. We had a very fast moving severe storm come through like two hours ago. And we had to put the, to go out and catch our goats and lock them back up. And so now that the storm has passed, we had to put our goats out. It was kind of a rodeo, so. Sorry I'm late. I'm happy you guys are here though. Tonight we are making lasagna and I am replacing my um, lasagna noodles with the keto grain free wraps that are absolutely amazing. You can fold them in all different directions, ball them all up and ta-da. No breaking, no cracking, no nothing. So I made up a huge batch of these. Hey Julie. Yeah, it was hot here too until that really bad storm just came through. And we went from like 97 down to probably 74, would be my guess. I'm not sure. In about like 10 minutes. So that was a little wild. But anyway, I'm going to be using my keto grain free tortillas as the um, noodles instead of using noodles. If you want to use noodles, that's fine too. Um, this is just a way to make this grain free. And I just can't get over how flexible these things are, you guys. They're <laughs> just absolutely amazing. I do have a video up on how to make these if you're interested. I also have per perfected uh, making them. In that video, I was still learning how to make them and they kind of stick, stuck to the pan a little bit. And what I've learned since then is actually, um, Julia says, we're 105 here in Illinois. Geez, I'm hoping it cools down. I think it's headed your way, actually, the whole coolness of the rain and everything we just had. Um, but anyway, so what I actually learned about making these is the creator of that recipe said to go on a lower heat, um, but, and just use a dry skillet, but I don't know if they were like using a nonstick skillet or what, but basically what I found is actually not to use a dry skillet. If you use a skillet with a little tiny bit of lard and over medium heat, they cook up just fine. So anyway, I have a whole pan of those. We're going to use them as noodles for today. So that'll be fun. Um, yeah, big news. Yeah. A lot of you guys saw the 1000 subscriber celebrational video. Um, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. If you, I'm trying to nail down a date and time to that. So if you have a preference as to when that takes place, I do have a poll up here on the channel. Please go over and vote on that poll. Basically, um, I think it's like, let me move it, move it my calendar. Hang on. Okay, so the options are like July 21st at 7 p.m., July 22nd at 7 p.m., which is a Friday, or July 23rd, which is a Saturday, all at 7 p.m. So if you care, if it matters in your life, when we have our big celebration party, go on over. Oh, hey, Carl, I missed your comment. I'm still trying to get used to this like, live thing because it only lets me see comments for like, a couple seconds and then it fades them away. So I'm going to look into how to fix that because I can get behind in comments really quick. Anyway, so if you care what time the, the huge uh, 1,000 subscriber giveaway is and uh, the live Q&A, if you care about any of that, go vote on the poll that's up here on the channel. The other thing I wanted to say, which is exciting, is I have a dear friend who suggested to me that I should make up a wish list on Amazon. Doesn't matter to me as long as it's around 7 p.m. Okay, Julie. I was just thinking if we moved it later, that would be a lot better for most people. Um, so anyway, this dear friend suggested to me that I make up a wish list on Amazon. So I have done that. And after this video is completely uploaded onto YouTube, uh, and available for you guys to rewatch it. Um, there'll be a little link down to the description that has my wish list. Now, you are not obligated to buy anything to be inside the um, free giveaway, okay? But my birthday is literally the next week. It's July 25th. So if you guys want to get me something, um, either now for my birthday or after this, I will have that wish list up permanently. So if you guys feel like blessing me with something, there's an entire list on there of things I would absolutely love. And if you order from that list between now and it gets here before the live, I will open that gift live for you guys, okay? 
Julie says, yes, you need a wish list so we can go check out and surprise you. Yes, I would love some surprises and I cannot wait to um, open them live because I think that would be just a blast. So that live party will be number one, the giveaway of the um, custom aprons. Number two will be a live Q and A. And number three will be a, an unboxing of gifts if you guys choose to get me gifts for my birthday. So like I said, that link I will have to put in after this uploads onto YouTube. Unfortunately, the thing I've learned about this live YouTube thing is it actually takes longer, which is hilarious, to upload and process a live video on YouTube than it did before on my old streaming service, which I think is just hilarious because I had to upload it twice then. But anyway, give me 10, 15 minutes, maybe even 20 after this is uh, finished and we close out the live and then the link and everything will be up there. Okay. Cool. So the first step we're going to do, we're going to start on this lasagna. I went ahead and took my oven back outside because I have to bring it in every time it rains. So it's back outside. And um, the first step is going to be cooking up some ground beef over here in the pot. Another thing I'm looking forward to doing, and I haven't told my husband this yet. So if you're watching live, honey, wink, wink. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be getting a new stand for my phone. I haven't talked to him about this yet, but um, they offer stands so I can start, um, Videoing in portrait mode, which, uh, no, not landscape, I mean mode, which will do better with YouTube. And um, I can like bring you all the way over top of a dish that I'm making so you guys can literally look down on it. So I think that'd be really cool. So that's all in the works. It's all coming. It's all exciting. It's all a blast. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn my pan back here. <laughs> Carl says, I want to give you a million dollars. The best I can do is a bag of 100,000 bars. <laughs> All right, so we've got a pan, a cast iron pan, or you can use your choice of pan. Just try not to use uh, no, non-stick, that stuff's not good for you. I have it over medium heat, and I'm going to grab the two pounds of ground beef. This came from a local farmer just right down the road. It's the best kind of meat to get, you know? All the kids are over playing, and um, I think they're going to watch a movie tonight as well. They were outside swimming for most of the day until the storm came. <laughs> I'm going to try something. Let me just push this and see if it'll bring up the chat. Yep. There we go. Okay, cool. Gail, who asks for people to send them birthday gifts? Seriously, unsubscribing. Okay, well, you can totally unsubscribe. Uh, no problem there. Because it actually was a wish list for not just my birthday, but that's okay. No problem, Gail. Have a good time. All right, so we're going to cook up this meat, and I'm going to go grab an onion. I'll be right back. All right, so I already chopped my onion because I had some onions that were growing tops. So it happens to everybody, but um, I'm going to go ahead and I just chopped it up. I chopped up what was still good, put it in a Ziploc bag, moved it to the refrigerator so it's good to use, okay? So I'm going to add that. I'm going to add about what one onion would be worth, okay? Maybe that's a little over one onion. Oh, well. <laughs> I like onions. My husband doesn't, but it's okay. All right. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to chop up some garlic. We need, hang on one second, let me move my bowl of cheese. We need three, glo three cloves of garlic. And I'm actually going to be like kind of timesing and a half this, so I'm going to do a little pan along with a 13 by 9. So don't get confused as I add just a couple more cloves of garlic. Okay, so I know I've gone over this multiple times in other videos. This is a clove of garlic. This is how I learned how to 
cook, guys. <laughs> okay, so on this end, um, it's a little hard end there. We're just going to chop that off with a knife. Okay, it's cut off. And then, we're just going to give it a little bop here. Sometimes they peel automatically once you chop that hard end off. These are going to go into the pot. Sorry, I'm laughing about Gail's comment because I'm so glad she unsubscribed because it's one less person that I have to send a free apron to. It actually worked out quite well. All right, so this is going to get going here. Uh, hang on, somebody commented. Hang on, guys. Um, she wasn't asking for gifts. She said if we'd like to give, give her something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you come in at the end of a conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, though. There's going to be people who just need some help. Um, and I can't give that help, so they can go find it somewhere else. That's okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> Alexis says, what's wrong with wanting birthday gifts? Well, maybe she has some soul wounds as a child. She never got a birthday gift or something. I don't know. It's okay. No big deal. Okay, so while this is cooking, why don't we go over next week's recipe, which is gizzards, guys. Time to talk about gizzards. Now, I know it's not going to be everyone's favorite uh, live. I'm going to make gizzards. And then I'm going to also fry up some chicken. So if you don't like organ meats, that's okay. I'm still going to show you how to make gizzards and how it's the same batter, you guys, whether you make gizzards or whether you make um, fried chicken. Now, I will say that if you're going to make gizzards with me, next Tuesday morning, take your gizzards out of the package, put them in a slow cooker, and slow cook them for eight hours on low, okay? That is the very first step to absolutely amazing gizzards, okay? Other than that, um, you're going to want three to five pounds of meat. Now, like I said, if you're not a huge gizzard person, go get yourself three to five pounds of cut chicken. That's okay, too. You're going to need, um, depending on your fryer, mine takes like a gallon, a whole gallon of coconut oil. And what I typically do is I reuse my coconut oil. I've talked about this in the past, where you fry stuff and then you um, strain it. And yes, Julie, it makes them amazingly tender. It is the absolute best gizzards you ever had in your life um anyway and so then what we're going to do then is you take you take and you use your coconut oil and then you can strain it through like a cheesecloth when you're done um and obviously after it's gotten cooled okay and then i store mine into the freezer and you can use that as many times as you feel comfortable using it um so i'm going to pull mine out probably next monday and start thawing it out so it's ready to go on tuesday so you will need some sort of coconut oil in whatever container you're gonna to use to deep fat fry, okay? I'm gonna stir the dinner here. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys jumping on here with me because um, there's, there's quite a few of you that come every week and I just love it. I feel like we get to know each other, and so it's just, it's so cool. Um, I'm also looking into another platform, and I'm not making an announcement right now about using this particular platform, but I have set up a community over on Locals, so it's like Locals.com. Um, I'm just looking into it at this point, though. Um, basically, um, it's a way for us to connect even more than we can here on YouTube, and I can put content there that YouTube will not allow here. Um, and... What's really cool is, um, 
and this is the part I'm, I'm kind of iffy about, but anyway, I could charge like $2 or something really low. And, um, oh, Jackie, yay, the chat is working. That's awesome. Jackie's been like locked out of <laughs> commenting on my videos for some reason for like weeks. So thank you, Jackie. That's awesome that you're back. Okay, so back to what I was saying, which was what? I can't remember. Um, I'm just so happy for Jackie. <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about. Uh, oh, well. If you guys know what I was talking about, put it down in the comments. I can't remember. And we'll pick up where I left off. It'll be okay. <laughs> I just emailed Jackie to say, oh, I know what I was talking about, the new platform. Okay, so Locals.com was the new platform. And the reason why I love it is because, bear with me, they have an ability, and I, I will still post here on YouTube, so don't freak out. But I can also post there, and you guys can watch my videos free there. And also, you would have an opportunity to join a member club, which I will not, guys, I'm going to go as low as I can on the price, okay? It's like, I was thinking like $2, okay? Because I don't care. I just want to get the news of great nourishment to you guys. But the benefit of doing a membership, this is just so cool, is it's kind of like Facebook. So that would allow you guys to post. Like, let's say you guys make a really delicious meal and you want to share a picture of it with everybody. It would allow you guys to post that picture and for all of us to encourage each other. And I think that's absolutely amazing. That is where it's at is to come around each other as a community and share what each of us are doing. And it's not all about me, which is great because I never wanted it to be all about me. So anyway, I'm looking into that still. So this is not an announcement, but I am looking to see what we can do to grow our community more. So anyway, that's that. It's called, um, it's called Locals, locals.com. It's supposed to be not owned by the same people who own YouTube and the rest of the world. So um, you do not have to have a Google account in order to comment or anything like that. So I really, really like that. And then of course, the other thing I like is that um, there's like less spam. So there's people, because your, your live streams and everything are just with the people who you want to be there, which is great. And um, yeah, so anyway, just looking into that. Okay, so back to the recipe. So you're gonna need three, uh, three to five pounds of chicken meat of your choice. You're gonna need coconut oil and a fryer if you have one. Now, if you have an air fryer, you could probably do the same process. I've never used one of those, so I can't help you out with that. The next thing you're gonna need is at least two cups of sprouted flour, but I would plan on at least four. You always use more flour than what you think you're going to. Um, two cups of milk or buttermilk, <clears throat> three eggs, some salt, thyme, basil, oregano, pepper, mustard powder, paprika, garlic powder, and ground ginger. Those are all spices that go on the chicken, okay? That's for next week for those gizzards. <clears throat> but like I said, if you plan on joining, and cooking along with me, you're going to want to slow cook your gizzards next Tuesday morning for eight hours. That rooster was pox, I betcha. I'm going to be so sad when I, when I butcher them all off here in a few weeks. <laughs> I'm not going to have any more. Although I might chicken out and only, only butcher off checkers because he's like the most aggressive one to the other roosters, but... We're transitioning our flock over to more um, heritage breeds, uh, multi-purpose breeds. So um, basically, yeah, so I'm butchering out my roosters because I'm going to be having roosters of these other two breeds. I want to switch. <clears throat> we usually raise Freedom Rangers, but I want to switch our flock over for a more long-term solution to meet bird problems. <laughs> I call them problems, but... Um, I want to be able to breed our own chickens here on the farm and um, use their offspring as meat. So it's just a more self-sustainable way to go. So that's my plan. So anyway, I end up having to butcher off chickens. So that's all part of it. I'm also going to be selling off a ton of my egg layers. Um, 
So that, that's the future of all that. We're just waiting for this to cook on up, guys. But yes, those gizzards are absolutely amazing. I made them last time my husband took them <clears throat> to work. And he let his, co his co-worker try one. And his co-worker was like, oh my gosh, those are the best gizzards I've ever had. And actually, all of our kids enjoyed the gizzards. Um, even, except, except for one. Nevaeh did not enjoy them. She wasn't her. It wasn't on the top of her list, you know. But everybody else did. I think my compost container got left out in the rain. Okay, so I'm going to call that good because the meat is, you know, just like a real, real mild pink color. We're going to bake this anyway, you guys. Um, you guys should go ahead and preheat your oven to, hang on, uh, 350 degrees. And I'm going to grab another 13 by 9 pan here. And some lard, because I'm the lard girl, remember? <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm going to lard up these pots, you guys, these pans. I have a 13 by 9 here and a 7 by 11. The 7 by 11 is for the kids and I for tomorrow, because I always make a little extra when I make my meals. Um... So that we have some for tomorrow and it just has cheese in the bottom so don't freak out it's not dirty it just has cheese I use it to grade the cheese for the lasagna one thing I did want to mention I've mentioned this in the last one I thought it was kind of cool is I did um, add up the cost of making this meal because um, you know rising food costs and all that and I just want to show that you can still do it so this meal non-organic and everything purchased from Walmart is only $23 for a 13 by 9 pan. And that is 12 pieces. And you cannot buy 12 pieces of lasagna from the frozen section from Stouffer's for that price. So it's a really good price. Now, organic, most of the ingredients from Azure, it comes out to $33.91, which is $2.82 per serving. Totally doable. Okay, so we're just gonna put some of the meat mixture on the bottom of the pan, of each pan. I had to laugh, because some of the YouTube channels around here, they'll say, um, just to get people to click on it, they'll say, um, you know, so many meals for $20, but it's not an actual meal. It's like uh, just a plate per serving. <laughs> but it gets you to click, you know. Okay. So now the next step is to open up our organic tomato sauce. Wow, that's like backwards, isn't it? I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that one on, on the live. Because it automatically fixed, me, fixed it for me on my last platform, so... Okay, so you could totally dump these into a, um, a pot, and you could add your spices that way. Um, okay, sorry. I'm behind on comments, guys. Where are all the kiddos? The kiddos are over in the living room watching, um, what's the movie with Aslan in it? What's that? With the lion, Rar? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Julie says, I've made gizzards before, but they were tough. So glad to know about slow cooker. Yeah. Um, slow cooker is definitely the way to go. You guys can read that. It's not backwards. Really? It's only backwards to me. That's fascinating. Are you sure? Okay. Anyway, what I was going to say is you guys could tell, maybe I'll just dump it in there. I'm going to make this easy. You try to dump my lasagnas, guys. <laughs> And I just sprinkle my toppings, but I will do it this way. It's okay. It's only one more pan. So you need two cans of tomato sauce. I can read it. It's not backwards. That is fascinating to me. Okay. 
recipe calls for two cans of tomato sauce. These are 15 ounces, okay? I'm gonna do an extra one though because I am doing the other pan. This freezes well, you guys. I have actually not froze it though with my uh, grain-free tortillas in it yet, so, but obviously with regular um, stuff you could, regular noodles, you sure could freeze it. Okay, so then the next ingredient is two cans of organic tomato paste, which is still backwards to me, but apparently it's good for you guys. These are six ounces, so a total of 12 ounces of tomato paste. <clears throat> The stuff from like Azure Standard by the case, they sell tomato paste and tomato sauce and all that. So, and it goes. I'm so excited about our giveaway and I'm so excited about the, uh, the aprons. And as soon as I hear back from my friend who's doing the aprons for me, she does it as sort of a side hustle. Um, then, and she sends me a rough draft of what they're going to look like, then I will, um, post that, um, probably in the video about winning it, you know, and all of the YouTube rules as far as how to be entered into the giveaway. All right. So to this. I'm hoping I'm not missing any comments, guys, because it just disappears on me. Okay, I always open my paste on both ends, and oh, and it just pushes right out. That's awesome. Oh, Alexis, what's the giveaway? You missed it. Okay. Oh, and there's more comments. Hang on, guys. I got to get caught up. I got to figure out how to not make it so it doesn't disappear. Because you guys are, like, all talking, and I'm missing all this. Yes, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. That's it. That's what they're over there watching. So, Alexis, the giveaway is because we um, made it to a thousand subscribers, we're going to do a subscriber giveaway. And um, I'm having custom kitchen aprons made that are gonna have the Abundantly Blessed logo on it, which I'm super excited about. Um, and so I'm gonna be giving those away live um, on our live thousand subscriber giveaway. So, um, and there is a poll up if you care about what day and time that happens on. I think it's like July 21st at 7, which is a Thursday, um, July 22nd at 7 p.m. or July 23rd, which is a Saturday at 7 p.m. So if you care, go vote on that. But that's the giveaway. I want to give away some cooking aprons. I think that'll be really, really fun. Fingers crossed I'm a lucky one to get an apron. Yeah, right? I was like, ah! Oh. So anyway, I'm also going to talk to her about, like, for those of you guys who don't win the apron, but you guys still want one, about how many more she could make, okay? Um, she is a stay-at-home mom, so this is, uh, she just had a baby, so it's my way of supporting her, and the stuff she makes looks really great, so I asked her about washing and everything, and she said it shouldn't be an issue, so, all right, so we're going to go on with spices, guys. I'm getting out my one teaspoon measurement. This is going to be super easy. One teaspoon of oregano is going to go into our sauce. I think it'll be great. I was like really trying to figure out what I wanted to give away and I was like, you know what, how about an apron? So I'm gonna do a little bit extra because I'm doing the extra pan. So do not get confused, guys. One teaspoon of oregano. Okay, next ingredient is one teaspoon of basil. One teaspoon of healthy salt. You want pink salt? Uh, you know, pink Himalayan salt, this is real salt, Celtic sea salt that is gray, all those things are great. Uh, you need one teaspoon of pepper, this is ground black pepper, I'm just borrowing the container. I like it because I can get my spoon in there. Okay, and that's it for seasoning, so that's super easy. We're just going to stir it. 
I was getting ready to get on this live and I was like, man, this is actually like more complicated than it was on the other platform. <laughs> I'm going to fill one of these up half full with water and add it to the tomato sauce mixture. Because YouTube wants to make sure that I, you know, do I want to limit the age of my viewers to over 18 is, is what I'm just about to put on live. Um, for kids, like it wants me to answer all these questions before I can go live. So I'll have to make sure I start that whole process earlier next time. Okay, so I added a half of a 15 ounce jar with some filtered water and just dumped it in here. If you're going to be using regular noodles, you're going to want to use a full jar of water. Okay, Let's see if we can make this look good, huh? All right, so here we go. I'm going to add some sauce to the bottom of each pan right on top of the meat. It'll help if you guys had something to watch, huh? Woo, there we go. <laughs> All right. We need a spoon. We need a nice spoon here to smooth it on out. All right, I'm going to take my first layer of these grain-free tortillas, which I am using as the um, noodles. You sure could buy noodles. That's fine, too. Um, I am almost finished healing my cavities. Yes, yes. Um, and so I'm sticking to my diet. I'm actually going to add a little bit more water to this, guys. But only because I have an extra pan. So I'll still stick with one jar of water for the original 13 by 9 pan. pan. There. That looks better. Okay, so to the top of these, we're going to add our cottage cheese. You need a full 16 ounce container of cottage cheese. I love this cottage cheese. Actually, I love everything Nancy's. But if you can't afford organic um, or Nancy's, you can buy, um, keep your eye out for um, Daisy brand. That's a pretty good um, second best brand. So there's really not going to be any science to this. I'm just going to drop it on here by the spoonfuls <laughs> and then smooth it around. You could also use ricotta cheese. I just always reach for cottage cheese. Usually I have some in the, in the house, so it makes it easier. Okay, that first layer is done. How was everybody's 4th of July? We, we learned that we can see the fireworks from the neighboring town that's like 15 minutes away um, from our top window in our loft. So that was fun. We stayed up late and watched the fireworks without being eaten alive by mosquitoes, which is a plus, I think. Anytime you can watch fireworks without being eaten alive is a good thing. We also played horseshoes and uh, cornhole as a family. And let's see, I made black bean quesadillas. Those are really good. Anybody else go watch fireworks or is it just me? It like totally was so hot here that I was like, ooh, I don't, I don't think anyone's going to be going out in that. So we're just layering this, you guys. Just layering it. All right, I'm going to put another layer of, let's see, sorry. I'm going to put a little bit of cheese. You need 24 ounces of mozzarella cheese that's been shredded. So we put down a meat and sauce layer. Put down your, either your fake noodles or your real ones. <laughs> Covered it in some cottage cheese. <clears throat> Added another, another little bit of the meat mixture, and now we're topping it with just a couple of handfuls of the mozzarella cheese. I love making extra, making the second pan right here, because 
Um, then we can eat it tomorrow for lunch. Um, just wondering where you do live. I found out. Sorry, guys. I am behind again. I really have to figure out these comments. This is going to drive me like nuts because I love comments. I'm not ignoring you. So if you guys comment, I'm not responding. It's because I haven't checked yet. Um, uh, sure, Julie. I will definitely look into like if, if someone doesn't win one, like how many more she would make. Alexis says, just wondering where do you live? I found out about you from my local Western A. Price chapter leader. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I live in South Dakota. So I am a chapter leader. And so I'm part of like the chapter leader emails. We have like, an email system that all of the chapter leaders for Weston A. Price. Um, who's your chapter leader? If you don't mind commenting and saying. Um, anyway, we're all part of a, <clears throat> an email system. And so I've been sharing some of my videos, hoping that that would happen. My hope and desire is that this channel would be directly linked into Weston A. Price. Because um, I don't believe they have any sort of YouTube channel that is directly linked into Weston A. Price. And I would love to link my generation and my viewers up with the Weston A. Price Foundation. And we can all be like one big community. That would be awesome. So that's awesome that your, your chapter leader did it. Hi, Carissa. Chris is on. Yay! Okay, um, Carl says, Julie, maybe you'll get an apron that her brother-in-law got her. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> no, I'm not going to send her that one. Come on. Okay, Julie said, my fourth was pretty basic. I was tired, so I was in bed at 9, but I watched fireworks Saturday night that my neighbor let off for like 45 minutes straight. You kind of have to watch the fireworks when your neighbor lets them off, huh? The fireworks were given in celebration of your 1,000 plus subscriptions. <laughs> I know Carissa was sick with the big C. That's what she did for 4th of July. Okay, so I'm gonna do another another uh, layer here of my grain-free keto um, tortillas. If you wanna learn how to make those, I did not make them live tonight because it would have taken a very long time. Um, I do have a video up on how to do that. They're very, very basic. They're made out of um, psyllium heat, seed husk, coconut oil, lard, um, just all of that, so they are easy to make, and it makes it so that I can keep healing my cavities that are almost gone. Um, I just checked on them yesterday because I'm like, I have this feeling of like, I want to know I'm still making progress, and they're almost gone. I'm very excited. Got like a quarter of the way to go, which is worth it. Just keep on plugging. Okay, so I'm going to add some more sauce. I love lasagna, you guys. <laughs> I haven't had lasagna in years. <laughs> it's been years, and so not being dramatic. We had, we did the GAPS diet for six months, and I got pregnant, and I was like slowly getting back into carbs because I just didn't like the way they made me feel, like my gut, you know? And um, my midwife was saying, well, you have to have some sort of carbs, blah, blah, blah. And so I was trying to get them in. And anyway, I never did do lasagna because it's so heavy carb. And um, so anyway, then uh, I had the baby and we still didn't do uh, lasagna. <laughs> and then we went back on the GAPS diet. Um, and so definitely no lasagna then. And that was last year. And so then we've been coming off of the GAPS diet, so I haven't, we don't really do noodles anymore. Um, just because it's really hard for me in my area to find properly prepared noodles. Um, I know like easy, uh, Ezekiel brand, I think they do sprouted ones, but I can't find any stores here. I'd have to travel like two hours to get those, so um, with gas prices the way it is, it doesn't look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. So I just decided to come up with a noodle I can have. All right, I'm gonna check chats again, guys. Okay, I'm caught up, that's good, okay. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to make that stay on there. All right, these are like totally full and I have extra sauce, that's okay. Extra sauce is not a big problem, that's a good thing, right? 
Usually I fill mine up with so much sauce that they overflow all over my oven. So it's probably good that I have extra sauce. <laughs> all right. So I'm just smushing these down a little bit, making sure they get in the sauce. And then I'm going to top it off with my cheese. Like I said, for a 13 by 9, it is um, 24 ounces of mozzarella cheese. Um, this is more than 24 ounces, so I just kept grating, you know. There it is. And then, you know, we're going to have to do some glitter because what would life be without glitter, right? So I think I will kind of spoil the surprise a little bit because, you know, I, I want to talk about it because I really feel it's awesome. So the logo for Abundantly Blessed Homestead that I'm having custom made is um, something that links back to a friend of mine that passed away from cancer last year. Okay, really quick, parsley for the glitter is going on top. This is not necessary, but I love to make my food pretty, okay? I think food tastes better when it's pretty. And I'm telling you what right now, this looks a heck of a lot better than the Stouffer's. And I haven't even cooked it yet. So there you go. And I didn't even use the whole thing of cottage cheese either. You probably, I probably could have put more in there. I just didn't. So it'll still taste delicious. But that's that. That's ready to go into the oven. So... Anyway, I'm going to move these out of the way, and I'll take you guys outside to go preheat my oven, and we're going to talk about these uh, aprons. So, I had a friend pass away last year. I had three friends pass away last year, cancer, but um, one of them was like a mentor to me. Um, she was older than I was, and um, basically, okay, so we're going 350 degrees, guys. Got my little oven going. Okay. Um, basically, um, she used to tell me that I, she was, she was just very encouraging with my lifestyle and she used to tell me, um, to protect my, my kids as if I was a, a mama hen with some chicks. Anyway, then she passed away and her daughter came to visit me and didn't know this backstory. And um, basically, um, she had brought um, some of her mom's stuff for me, and one of the things was a necklace that has a mama hen with her chicks. And she didn't know the backstory, so that, that necklace actually means a lot to me. So, the look for Abundantly Blessed Homestead is going to be Abundantly Blessed Homestead, and it's going to have a picture of a mama chick and some baby chicks because I strongly feel that our responsibility, whether you're a mama chick or a daddy rooster, is to teach our children how to consume healthy, nutrient-dense foods. And the only way they're going to learn it is from you. Just like um, when a mommy, a mommy bird, a mommy chick, or a mom birdie, that's the tree, um, teaches them what to pack at teaches them what to eat, teaches them what to be afraid of. That is our job as parents, whether you are a single dad, single mom, a dad, a mom, whatever. Um, those children have been given to you for you to teach all about this world and what is important to eat. So the logo, like I said, a bundle of blessed homestead, in the middle will be a picture of a mama hen and her chicks. So that is the logo and we're just waiting for it all to come together. And once that all comes together, then I will post a video and I'll open up the um, giveaway as far as the rules and how you guys enter and all of that uh, will be coming up after that. So I'm just waiting on her to give me the final picture of what it all looks like and then we'll be rolling with that. So that's that. So I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees where those two delicious dishes over there will be headed for one hour. <laughs> I'm actually going to set a, uh, a little reminder because I've forgotten that our food's out there baking sometimes. So um, I'm going to set a reminder to go check on it at 50, five zero minutes 
to see what it looks like. Usually it would take one hour to bake this. So I'm going to do that. And yes, my oven's not broken. Yay, that's great. So um, I just, <laughs> the kids had messed with the dials and I didn't have it set right. So that's why it wasn't working. All right, if you guys have any questions or any comments, comment down below. I can go back over recipes if you guys have questions on this recipe or the one for next week. I'm just going to start cleaning up. And if you guys have something to talk about, let's talk about it while we're live, shall we? It is so warm. I put out a video today on uh, the fermented chicken feed. That's up on the channel. And I do plan to do another day in the life. So that'll be exciting. I know you guys really liked that video. That was good. Um, I only have to mix my chicken feed like that once a month. And so um, I only have one super crazy, well, I can't say that. I have five kids in a farm. I only have one super crazy day that includes mixing grain once a month. <laughs> um, and then we do have meat birds, so that's mixing grain once a week for them because they obviously eat a lot more food than an egg layer. But, um, yeah, I'll do another day in the life. That was fun. You guys want to watch it, I'll make it. <laughs> I was also looking into doing a, um, a uh, what you call it, Amazon influencer where I would put up like a store where you guys can go and buy a lot of the items that I use. But honestly, I don't shop at Amazon. So um, I wish other stores had the ability to make a list that people could purchase if they want items for me. Only if you want to. I'm not forcing anyone to buy anything for me for anything. But if you wanted to bless my family with something, you wanted to be generous, you sure could. I just wish that there were other, um, I wish there were other websites that I could do that with because I personally don't support Amazon. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, the influencer thing I love to go on YouTube's uh, channels and click on their on their actual uh, Amazon store because then you can go look up the exact item that they're using. Um, in their video and figure out what it is, which I think is great. But like I said, I just don't know that I'm going to go there with Amazon because I don't, I don't know. I don't know that I fall into that category the best, the best for Amazon anyway. <laughs> Let's see. I can show you guys the mozzarella cheese I used tonight. This is Rumano. This is from Azure Standard. Uh, mozzarella cheese. Um, yeah, Romano, the Romano, bland, bleh, Romano brand is what we use for um, our butter as well. So that's that. <laughs> anyway, I think it'll be a lot of fun. The whole live give giveaway thing will be a lot of fun. And I'm hoping more people can catch it because it's going to be in the evening. I know that lives at 5.15 um, Central Standard Time are a little hard for a lot of people to catch because especially if you're not in my time zone um, and you're trying to catch it and you're still at work or, um, yeah, um, it just makes it interesting. So, anyway, um, but this is when I cook my dinner, so I figured it would be a good live because I'm already cooking. Anyway, anybody have any questions? Are we good to go? Okay, I'm behind on comments. Okay. I'm going to catch up, guys. Sorry, this thing does not alert me when I have comments and does not leave it up. Okay. Carissa, I hope you feel better soon. Uh, wormwood, Carissa. Okay? That's all I'm going to say on that one. Um... Julie, I joined Weston A. Price because you promoted it on your channel. That's awesome. All the money that you, that you do for your membership, which is only $40 a year, goes directly into research. Okay, you guys, it's not like you're paying for a membership and then they just keep all your money and pay it to their staff. Um, they're a non-for-profit organization. <laughs> and so they are taking that money and they're using it to study food 
so that they can tell you why to consume butter or why to consume liver, or why it's important, or what is the link between this food and this disease. So it's totally worth $40, you guys. Okay, so then what else do we have? That's uh, The website is www.westonaprice.org. Okay. All right. Hey, Connor. Hold on, let me go get their name. I just really got involved. Love Weston A. Price. I'm not sure what that means, Alexis, but Carl, I was on an airplane going over Washington, D.C. on the way to really North Carolina, and it was a spectacular display looking at 25,000 feet. That'd be awesome. Um, Julie says, I bet that was awesome. Carl says, it was Julie and I on the cur correct side of the jet. Such a fantastic temporary view. <laughs> Okay, Alexa says, Kathy and Jackie out of, po oh, Kathy and Jackie, they're on here too. Thank you, Kathy and Jackie, for sharing the name of my channel with somebody else. That's awesome. All right, Alexa, thank you for joining. Julie says, so cool. I'm sorry you lost someone so close to you. Yeah, it's, it was a really rough year, you guys. 2021, I don't want to relive, so. Um... Uh, let's see, Jack says, hi Alexis, Jackie, Kathy's pro chapter leader, awesome. Okay, just think when you get like 50,000 subscribers, I can say, ha ha, I've been here since the beginning, lol, I'm so happy for you, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, Alexis says, awesome, Jackie, can't wait to meet and talk soon. Oh, hi Terry, you're listening too. Julie says, I purchase one item from Amazon on a regular basis, just one, my dog wraps. They are good quality and price. Oh, and I was putting an arrow in for your comment. Good price for the quality, I think is what it says. <laughs> it's covered up, sorry. I don't know how to do this. I get compared. Oh, come on. Give me back my comments. I get compared to Costco and PetSmart, maybe. There we go. I'm just going to guess. I, don't, it's, I can't. It was, oh, there it goes. I'm going to figure this out eventually, you guys. I am. <laughs> They're good quality and price for the quantity I get compared to Petco and PetSmart. Got it. Okay. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. What I learned, you guys, um, from my, specifically my two friends that passed away, and what I will um, share with you, is that your gut health matters. Okay. Um, in both cases, both friends had um, either celiac disease or some something going on with their gut that was not addressed or was only addressed um, through diet and not through healing of the gut and the body itself. Um, and you can only go so long in your life not absorbing your food correctly. Okay, Carl, good night. My, my wife is having her morning coffee. That's awesome. See you next week, Carl. Thanks for your support. Um, so anyway... Um, that's what that really, really struck home to me, and it's, it's not like, um, they were very, very young. They were my age, 35 and younger. One, I think, was 26 or 27. Um, and so it just really struck home to me. What we're eating matters, what we're making matters, what we're putting in our body and on our body matters. Um, and so that was the one thing that I learned, was that um, the, the body is giving signs and signals, and when we choose to ignore them by just putting a band-aid on it, um, we're not healing, which means we're not fixing the problem. And when you have such a large problem, I mean, people are walking around <laughs> in this world saying, I just have IBS, I just have gluten intolerance, I just have dairy intolerance, um, I just have colitis, I just have fill in the blank, you know, I just have headaches. On and off. I just and they just keep band-aiding it by eliminating certain things, but not going any further um, into actually healing the body. And that's where we fall very short of our potential as humans, <laughs> because our bodies were created, and when they were created, they have knowledge of how to multiply cells and heal itself. That's why a band-aid, your cut gets healed. It's not the band-aid that heals the cut; it's your body. So, basically, we have to learn how to listen to our bodies. 
If you are having a headache that keeps reoccurring, maybe look into it and say, hey, am I having headaches around, if you're a woman, around hormonal stuff? And maybe it's low magnesium. There's just so much out there and your body is doing these things, trying to give you a message. And the longer we go ignoring the message, the worse it gets because your symptoms continue to compound on top of each other. And there's no real healing in that. There's no real healing in just taking an aspirin. There's no real healing in living the rest of your life afraid of gluten or um, fill in the blank, dairy. Um, we have to get the gut better. My strongest recommendation is looking into the GAPS diet. That's what worked for my family. I'm not gonna claim it's the only way to heal the gut. Um, but it is a very successful way to heal the gut. Um, and it is a very hard diet. I'm not gonna, not gonna say it's an easy one, because it's not. Um, but what you gain from that diet is a changed life, you guys. You are no longer allergic to food. <laughs> you are thriving. Your body is getting all the nutrients it needs. Totally, cha that changes everything. Once you're getting all the nutrients you need, are you kidding? You can heal cavities, you can heal knee issues, you can heal, I had a rotator cuff that I healed, I never went in for. Um, I have full function now of my right arm where I did not, I couldn't even sleep on my right shoulder before we did the GAPS diet. We had holes in the enamel of our teeth heal closed. We got rid of seasonal allergies. We're going on year number five with no seasonal allergies, you guys. I had horrible seasonal allergies using an inhaler. Um, we just had so much healing on it, um, and it's just proof of once your gut is healed and sealed, and it has a good population of good bacteria, how much your body can heal. It's absolutely amazing. It was designed for that. Okay, Julia says, I really like supporting small businesses. Years ago, Walmart put my dad's sporting goods store out of business because he couldn't buy. Hang on. Don't, don't take away my comments. Come on. Okay. Because <laughs> he couldn't buy large quantities like they would be able to, to reduce his prices. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and now prices are going up. And so a lot of people who live in the country are getting to the point where they can't, they have no other option but Walmart and prices are going through the roof. So yeah all right guys there's going to be an awkward silence for about three minutes i'm going to go put these outside in my oven because it should be pretty by now i'm only going to bake one and the small one's going to go in my refrigerator for tomorrow so i'll be right back Anyway, I did not know what I was going to do for a logo at all, and then uh, her broken leg healed very quickly, yes, because of um, diet, exactly, yep. Um, I didn't know what the logo was going to be, and I was discussing it with Bree, which you guys all know Bree, um, on the way to town, and she said, what about a mama hen and her chicks? And as soon as she said it, I was like, yep, that's what it is. So anyway, I'm so excited. I'm excited to give away stuff to you guys. I'm excited to have a live Q&A with you guys. I'm excited just to celebrate with you guys. And I know Carl already like got off, but yes, my, my face is beginning to hurt from smiling. <laughs> I've been smiling for like 24 hours. If one day, if, if one day we hit 50,000 subscribers, oh my gosh, that's going to be crazy. I did have 1,004 subscribers before this, but then we lost, I don't remember her name anymore, whoever it was. Uh, so now we have 1,003, which that's okay, we're still over 1,000, no big deal. Um, but anyway, if we could even, I mean, I, I never thought I'd be here, you guys, so I feel extremely blessed that you guys get on these lives and you sit and watch me cook and you guys stick with me and there's a lot of you guys who are on here every single week 
and you know Julie and Carl and Kathy and Jackie and um, Judy from California there's just so many of you guys Kristen um, there's just a lot of you guys that are on here every single week and it keeps me going and I really really enjoy you guys commenting and getting on here and being able to talk which is great and I really really enjoy that I I have been given access to your life that you guys have allowed me into your life I feel so honored and I feel so honored that I have an opportunity to impact the world like this so um, as far as this will go as far as God will take my videos <clears throat> if you guys share my videos on social media that really helps if you guys know a friend who is you know grain free and you guys send them my grain one of my grain free recipes or if you know someone who's looking into growing their own meat this year send them um, some of my meat bird uh, videos on how to do that it's not complicated pretty much laid out for everybody but if we can just as a community work together to keep on spreading the word my goal is not to get paid um, a thousand subscribers makes you quote unquote um, what do they call it uh, monetized I can I can be monetized now um, and for me it's not about the money number one I monetized that 1,000 subscribers but let me tell you I would have to have hundreds of views to make like a dollar okay so I entered into this not to make money but I entered into this so that we can have community and so we can spread the word of nourishing food and impact the next generation that is my passion Connor says we're driving in Indiana we are still a long way from Florida yeah I bet you are and Julie says your channel is so welcoming and educating I've never met you in person but I feel like we're friends. You have a wonderful personality, very likable person. Thank you. I, if I'm not smiling, then you know, uh -oh. you know that something's definitely wrong. So, for the most part, I smile and I laugh. And even when things get hard, I still laugh. Although I will say, holding myself accountable, when that really bad storm hit this spring, I cried instead of laughing. Um, but then shortly after, I was joking with my husband because. The storm with the 110 mile per hour winds had like blown a tree onto our wood pile, like stacked wood, you know, for the winter. And I said, oh, look at that, honey. It's the best wood delivery service for firewood. Um, and I said, you're never going to get a closer delivery than right there on the stack. So um, I, I am a generally very happy, very joyful person. And, um, you know, I'll stay down for a little bit with something like that. But it wasn't very long and I was already back up. It was so funny. <laughs> My husband, I think, was more upset because we built this home that we live in by ourselves. Um, and so we stood every wall together as a family. In fact, the first off-grid portion of our home, we stood all four walls with our family when it was like 22 degrees out. All of the kids were like bundled up with a whole bunch of layers and i had little william he was tiny he was in a baby carrier on my back bundled up to the hilt um looked like a little marshmallow strapped to my back and we pushed through all day and we got all four walls stood up together as a family and, and so um this home means a lot to us and um i think that when we got that really bad storm and there was all that damage that it was heartbreaking for us because we're still working on our home like we're not finished building it and we had all that damage <clears throat> but then I think for Jeremiah which is my husband's name I think his biggest thing was that that set us back it set us back several weeks in finishing our siding because he had to take out all the broken windows and reinstall them we're still waiting on one look at this guys <laughs> that's my window over my sink for now um, that's the other thing about this whole world right now is that everything is on back order everything is you know order it now and get it in like five months and unfortunately um what happened was we ordered a new window piece for the top i'm not sure what that's called it's glass you know and it took a month to get it but then when it got here it was the wrong size so i'm just hoping by like august maybe i'll have a window <laughs> so anyway um, but I think that was the hardest thing for us was that we knew that with all the damage that we had to deal with that was gonna set us back but if you've been watching my videos during that time you guys know that, that our, all of our neighbors um, 
came around us and helped us with all of our tree work, which was absolutely amazing. Um, so anyway, Julia says, yeah, and unfortunately it's only getting worse. Yes, I know. And I, I got so nervous when I realized we had to order a window and it was like, oh, is this going to come? Like, I don't, I don't want to be doomsday, but is it going to get here? <laughs> um, Connor says, did you build the, no, I did not. We have not connected the two homes together yet. Um, it's one of those deals where lumber is so expensive right now and we're paying cash for this. So we will do it when the prices crash, which is going to happen along with a lot of other prices. But um, then we will be the ones that step in and say, yay, lumber is super cheap. And we will end up attaching our two buildings. We basically started out 1800 style um, with, you, you fill in the blank with 1800 style. I have five kids, so I have to be kind of discreet on YouTube. Um, but anyway, and so um, basically we have two buildings and they are 12 foot apart and basically eventually they're going to be connected so one building is still completely off grid and then there's this building that i'm obviously on grid in <laughs> i have an air unit running that's nice and cool over here um and so eventually those two will be connected i'm actually in no rush though because um to be honest uh when you live 1800 style and um your life is just a lot harder and so we lived that way for six months and we did all of that just to be debt free and not have a mortgage and it's been worth it but once you've done life that way and then you do life this way where you have an on-grid portion of your home um, with you know electricity and running water and a hot water heater like you get to have hot showers again instead of cold ones and you don't have to like climb to the top of a water tank and bucket water out and then boil it so you can wash your dishes um when it is as simple as turning on the faucet and doing dishes and being able to cook without making a fire and all of that stuff um i love our house right now and i don't mind that we're not finished with it and i've told my husband this 100 percent that we have built our what, what our needs are and everything else after this is just cupcakes um and the more cupcakes we get great and if it stays this way for a while that's okay too I've got indoor plumbing and electricity and water that comes out hot. <laughs> it's just amazing. So anyway, living 1800 style, getting back to the basics is, um, was the best thing we could have possibly done for our family. Um, and I'm glad we did it. And it just makes you a very, very grateful person. Um, and it's just been amazing. It's been amazing to like slow down life a little. And our TV only runs when we plug it in. Like we don't have, um, TV service or anything like that. So that's why they're watching Narnia um, over there. But uh, anyway, that's the way we live. So I enjoy it. Even when it's hot. Julie says, a client of mine has been waiting for almost two years for a custom fit refrigerator. I bet. Luckily, we didn't do anything custom in this house. And my husband and I did all of the work. We installed um, all of the wood countertops which I absolutely love. And I just wanted to say that if you guys ever want to do wood butcher block countertops, or even for your um, your cutting boards, this one needs it really bad. I haven't done any other the crack right here. Um, uh, what is it? Real Milk Company, Real Milk Paint Company.com, I think. Um, anyway, they sell tongue oil, as in T-U-N-G, the, the tree, tongue oil. And they also sell um, citrus solvent, which is an alternative to uh, mineral spirits, and it's made out of oranges. So that's what I use to seal my countertops. I do 75% tongue oil and 25% of their citrus um, solvent that they sell on their website. You can use it to uh, re-oil all of your cutting boards so they don't crack. This one's starting to crack. I really need to get on that. Um, but I redo my countertops about once a month. And... Um, my house smells like oranges for a while, which is awesome. And the countertops, they don't soak in water. They are, um, they are smooth and like water resistant. And then once you start noticing that it's getting harder to scrub food and stuff off your counters, then you know it's time to remove everything from your countertop and do another coat, um, which doesn't take very long. 
So anyway, I would strongly recommend that if you guys even just have these wood cutting boards, just to go on their website and buy some because it, it will prolong the use of your wood cutting boards. I missed a comment. Hang on one second. She says, yes, so many ungrateful people in the world nowadays make them live off grid for a few months. Yeah, and their attitudes would change. Uh, whoops. Some of the entitlement would leave their personality. Yes. Yes. Um, I think that our culture has become so used to convenience and getting what we want right away, which is another reason why I actually don't like Amazon, um, that I feel like we've lost touch with just being still and we've lost touch with the value of time together. Um, now everybody's on their phone when we're together. Um, or whatever, you know, and when you work really, really hard just to exist, you are so happy that you're still existing <laughs> and you're, you're grateful for each other because we had to work together as a family. Everybody had their part and that has carried on into farm work because running a farm and growing your own food is very hard. It takes a lot of time. And there's a lot of YouTubers here, and that's why I try to be real. That's why I don't go do my hair all special for you guys. That's why I don't wear any makeup for these lives. I want to be real. This is who I am. I'm not going to go and put on a pretty face and pretty hair and uh, pretty clothes and pretend like life is easy because it's not easy. And growing your own food is not easy. <laughs> Having your own farm is not easy, and you need each other, you guys. Um, and the more we get back in touch with the family, and that we all need each other, even if you're not family. Friends need friends as well. We need community, we need each other. Julie said, and then hand them a Bible, yes. <laughs> and our world would be so much better, yes. I think that we have lost touch with that side as well. Um, and I think that uh, for the majority of it, it comes with um, us as parents trusting the raising of our children to someone else. And I think that when you do that, then it's open to whatever they want to teach them. So, uh, hang on. Ugh, this, this comment thing is driving me nuts. Connor says, we hate weeds. Yes. So weeds, I did a whole bunch of um, mulch this year. I need to do another garden tour, don't I, guys? Um, and we put in our own drip system. So maybe if tomorrow's, oh, tomorrow's supposed to be rainy too. Well, if it doesn't rain, then tomorrow I'll take my camera out into the garden and I'll give you guys a tour. But we did drip. Um, we paid $350 for materials to our own line. And that's the best $350 I've ever spent, you guys, because I tell you what, it's a drought right now, even though it rained today. It didn't rain very much. Um, and the weeds don't grow if they don't get watered. So setting up a drip system that has little pipes that drip the water out to each little plant and not to all the surrounding weeds, and you pull all the surrounding weeds you have a lot less weeds. Um, I also mulched with a lot of straw this year um, and last year actually. But um, yeah, weeds are not fun, but they're kind of a, they're kind of a thing that comes with gardening. <laughs> Which is why when I did my tour of my garden, I said, "Oh man, you guys, there's weeds, and if you guys garden, you guys know that there's weeds." So this has no morals, values, or standards anymore. I think some of the ones that have a sense of entitlement are going to learn. Yeah, I agree. Yes, I agree with all of what you just said, Julie. Absolutely. Um, so anyway, that's that. But um, I will do a garden tour, and then I will select a day in the life to video again. Those flies are out of control in here. You know what I mean? So what do I grow in my garden? I grow, um, well, everything we eat. You don't want to grow something in your garden that you don't eat. That's for sure. Um, when I first started gardening, because I did not grow up this way, like, no, uh, we had raspberry plants that we just sat out and ate. We had strawberry plants that we sat out and ate. Um, we, did, we never preserved any of our own food. We bought, uh, meals in a box and, um, no garden. I was actually raised hating vegetables, believe it or not. Um, and so anyway, I, I did not have a green thumb them at all. In fact, when we had our home in and we were living in California, um, my mom bought me some drought resistant plants for the landscaping in the front of the house and guess who killed those plants? 
me. <laughs> yeah, I killed him. So, um, it's a big stretch for me to have come fast forward 12 years to a point where I try to have a goal of growing a year supply of at least one thing in my garden every year um, and as much as I can of everything else. Um, but I, uh, I've gotten addicted to tomato plants. I, got, I have an addiction. It's, it's growing tomato plants and tomatoes. I love it. Um, yeah. Oh, I should show you guys that. Let me see if it's down here still. Hang on. Another thing I'm not going to hide from you. My cabinets need to be organized. Okay. If you guys have a um, KitchenAid and you guys are growing tomatoes for the use in tomato sauce, you guys need this attachment. Um, this first one is their attachment for meat grinding. But then into this, you end up putting a sauce maker attachment, which I'm not going to put it all together, okay? But basically... You don't have to blanch your tomatoes anymore to remove your skins. It's all gone in one step. You take your tomatoes. Doesn't matter if they're Roma tomatoes. Doesn't matter if they're slicing tomatoes. Doesn't matter. Raw. You quarter them so they fit into this hole. Okay? You turn on your mixer. You use this thing. And you push it through. And it spins around in this thingy, auger. <laughs> And the small juice type and juice and sauce type stuff comes out this and all of your seeds and your skins and even the bad parts of your tomatoes, guys, the black parts of your tomatoes all come out this end into a bucket. And then if you're going to make um, like a thicker tomato sauce or pizza sauce, you would take what comes out of this metal part and cook it down into a sauce. This is a huge time saver, you guys. Huge, huge, huge. So like I said, you have to buy the KitchenAid meat grinder attachment first and then add on the sauce maker attachment. I think these two combined is going to be over $100, but um, you can look on eBay. Um, sometimes people sell them used, but um, let's see. This is KitchenAid attachment F-A-G, no, F-G-A number two. And I don't know if this one has a number on it. Um, but anyways, then you have a meat grinder and you have a sauce maker tomatoes so fast I can do a whole bushel in less than 30 minutes you guys no blanching no burning yourself on hot water anymore and it just does all the work for you I've also used this for applesauce that's right applesauce I steam the apples stick it into here and they go through um, same process out the one end comes all of your your seeds your skins everything out the one end and your sauce comes out the other and then you can just go ahead and go right into jars I've also used this for je or jellies, jellies, where you're going to take out the seeds. Um, you could put like in my in my case, choke cherries into the top, raw, and put them all the way through. All the seeds come out one end, and all the choke cherry stuff comes out the bottom. It is absolutely amazing. It will save you so much time, and it makes making your own um, tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, so much faster, you guys totally worth getting. So that is my canning tip of the day. So that is, um, that's it for the, for the live, you guys. I have the lasagna outside, but I am hearing thunder. So <laughs> I'm going to have to let you guys go. I'm going to have to go get my goats back into the corral <laughs> and go get my oven from outside and bring it inside before it starts to rain. Okay. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for joining me so much for being on here connor and julie and everybody else i really appreciate it i'll see you guys in the next one okay thanks for watching